Everyday use, uh huh. Everyday use. There you go. We got an A now. <laughs> now, if your level is B1, you know, intermediate level, then we are going to be working in course of pronouns and re 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 relative classes. And we are going to be working with the course of comparatives and expressions in the past and future. Where do you find the links? Well, go to the link that we are sharing here for practice sessions. So you can see the schedule, you can see which uh, day of the week we are working in on each course, and you can do the one that you can participate in the practice session. Of. If your level is advanced, then we're going to be working on grammar. It's the course for grammar, okay? That's what we are going to be focusing on the three sessions this week. And of course, to be aligned with the startup ready, last week we worked on the course for, uh, we worked in the course of uh, English for startups. This week, we are going to be working on the course of um, business, English for business. We have five, two, four, six, six courses that we are going to be working on this week. You don't have to do them all, but you select the ones that will work for you, select the schedules and participate in the practice sessions. So we have a lot of things for you to do this week. You can't get bored. And where do you find them? Go to the practice sessions link and you will see all the schedule. John, which is the course from all of this that, you, uh, that catches your attention the most? Ooh, why? It is hard to choose just one. Because all of all of these courses give you something different, right? All of these courses are focused on a particular skill, so to say. But English for Everyday Use, it is it is one of my favorite audio courses. It was it was actually the first audio course we created at, at Platzi English Academy. So it brings me memories. But English for business, of course, it is very useful and very necessary. English for startups, which is the main topic that we are covering these weeks. So, oh my God, yeah. To choose one, it's really, really hard. Now I'm going to send a question back to you. Which one would you choose? Why? That's a great question that <laughs> you will send back to me. <laughs> um, I have to say that I'm with you. Um, especially for uh, beginners, the course for everyday um, use, I think it's a great one because it's a way to connect English with your personal life and with things that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, but I've got to say for advanced levels, uh, the one of grammar, it's focused on advanced grammar because I believe, and tell me, John, what you think about this, but mm -hmm. when we advance, in our learning path, sometimes we end up using always the same structures constantly. So I think it's important to check this advanced grammar to make sure that we incorporate new grammar structures to our uh, English. And that way our English doesn't stay in the same level, but we really uh, go a step farther. What do you think about it? Yes, definitely. Why everything is a process, right? We need to start from a point in which we feel comfortable and then go, you know, progressing little by little to make sure that we, you know, we have time to process all this information. And now speaking of processes and, you know, progressing little by little, let's talk a bit about books. Why? Because books are great tools for us to develop uh, not only our reading skills, but also to understand vocabulary and, you know, um, to practice and play with our imagination. What was that book, why, that helped you a lot when you started this process, you know, to learn English? Well, I love this question. And I've got to say that I have a list of different books that have helped me. Nice. But for me, and I want to start here, a book that or some books that help me see English in a different way, and especially with pronunciation and with, uh, with the rhythm of English, were Dr. Seuss books. This is a children's author. 
-hmm. And I loved it because he rhymes every, every single book has rhymes, right? So when you read them out loud, they really help me pay attention to pronunciation, to the intonation patterns of English, and it helped me a lot with intonation. So it's one that it's for children, but it really, really helped me a lot. I have some other in my list, but now you tell us, what has been a book that has helped you a lot? Well, why several books actually, but this was probably the very first book that I read in English um, when I was learning. And it was, I, I also liked, you know, the images and, and the animals, and it was definitely fantastic, Mr. Fox. It was, you know, part of the school assignments back in the day, and fantastic Mr. Fox really helped me as well. Like you mentioned, uh, the style was 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 really engaging um and it and i feel like it helped me a lot i'm gonna leave the name in the comment section so you can you can take a look at it um it's easy to read i like the pictures as well um and i started with that one why amazing you know i've seen the movie but i've never read the book so, oh really yeah okay go for I, it I, I will. I will go for it. Please leave that link because I'm going for that link. <laughs> okay. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And this is for, for, you know, for the beginner level. But of course, as, as we advance, there are more books. If you want to go a bit more advanced, well, a bit, no, like more advanced, you can go and have fun with, with Harry Potter, right? Oh. Or <laughs> the Lord of the Rings, which... They're hard to understand in Spanish. So imagine in English, but it's a nice <laughs> challenge. You also, you know, find yourself um, discovering very strange words. Um, you will have to have your dictionary handy, but it's a great experience because you can also contrast the book and, and the movies, right? And that gives you like a very interesting sensation. Absolutely. You went advanced. And I was thinking intermediate, but oh, I'm yeah, going to I start. I, I, you I just I, jumped there. I just skipped intermediate. Yeah, so I'll go with it. I think Perfect. a great author for intermediate levels is um, Dan Brown. You know, Da Vinci's Code. And totally. I already forgot the, the names of this, his other books because Da Vinci's Code is one of my favorite. Um, but you know, these books are great because they have, I mean, the, the story is very nice. At least I like that kind of novel. So uh, these stories are really nice. They are engaging. But, Angels and Demons. Thank you. Angels and <laughs> Demons. Yeah, I forget in Spanish, in English. <laughs> Angels mm -hmm. and Demons. They are, the, the story is very entertaining. But at the same time, Dan Brown writes in a, in a way that is very simple. So it's simple to follow. He doesn't use fancy, sophisticated words. So mm -hmm. you don't need to go to the dictionary that often. But I mean, you can still learn a lot, but you will be able to follow the story if your level is intermediate. So Dan Brown is definitely one of my biggest recommendations for intermediate. I have one for advanced, but before I go there, what other recommendations do you have for intermediate, John? For intermediate, why another book that helped me a lot was The Old Man and the Sea. Um, I believe the, um, the the writer of this book this book is Hemingway. I forgot the name. I know the last name. The last name is Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway. Er, uh, there, there you go. I Ernest love him. Hemingway. Yes, right. And and this book, well, the story is is fascinating, but also the reading. You know, it's it's pleasant. It's of course it's not basic. It's not that complex. It's it's intermediate. So I would leave it there. The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. 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 There you go. Hemingway. Hemingway. There you go. Amazing. Recommend it. I love this author. I know not everybody likes his um, his writing. My brother doesn't. <laughs> he okay. finds it boring but you know it's for me it's very interesting the way he writes definitely yeah it is very catchy you know the way in when he writes things it's very catchy so yeah 
And the ending is always unexpected. So it's mm -hmm. not the regular ending where everything is, you know, and they lived happily ever after, but you don't know what's really going to happen at the end of the story, right? Yes, definitely why. And I want to invite everyone right now to go to the comment section and leave a comment with your recommendations. What books do you recommend others to practice their English? And in the meantime, we are going to get ready to see our teacher in action, you know, where it's time to practice how to say a few things and how to express a few others in English when it comes to having a great performance in the startup world. So while you leave your comments in the comment section with recommendations, let's take a look at this video. Hey, want to jump on the bandwagon with me? Jump on the bandwagon? You don't play an instrument? That's okay, because jump on the bandwagon has nothing to do with actually playing on a band or jumping on a wagon. Jump on the bandwagon means to join in in a popular activity that other people are enjoying. So, if you want to jump on the bandwagon with me, it'll be fun. I promise. Come on, jump on the bandwagon and join me at Platzi English Academy. Yes, learn English now. So the one and only Ravi Lagmani is back from some very deserved, like um, relaxing time abroad. I know he was traveling. So Ravi, welcome back from your holidays. Tell us everything. What did you do? Where did you travel? Hey, John, thank you. Thank you for the lovely, warm welcome. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be back again. Um, I think John kind of oversold the idea of my holiday. I, I didn't travel the world. I went back to India to visit my family and do some things over there. But yes, I went to some places in India and I was able to uh, find some time to relax and, you know, just, just enjoy the weather. <laughs> Well, Ravis, but anyway, you caught several planes on your way from Canada to India. So that counts. <laughs> it does count. Uh, I stopped in Dubai. I don't know if that counts, uh, but I didn't. I, I just enjoyed myself at, at the airport. So, you know. <laughs> awesome. Perfect, Ravi. So we are all ears, eyes, hands, brains to learn vocabulary <laughs> and expressions if you want to succeed in this startup world. So the mic is yours. Thank you, John. So uh, welcome once again. My name is Ravi and I work as an English teacher in Platz English Academy. I also work as a creative specialist uh, taking care of social media stuff and all those exciting and fun things. So let me tell you what you are going to uh, learn today. This is going to be interactive. Okay, so be prepared, be ready with your keyboards, uh, take notes, ask questions in the comments. Uh, it will be lovely to uh, answer them. Now, uh, I also love hearing from you all uh, on social media. So feel free to contact me on Twitter at full stacking less or if you want to have some fun and if you if you are in the mood for um, some other exciting things learning in a fun way go on tiktok you know follow our platzi academy follow me uh, ask me questions you know and learn at the same time so vocabulary and expressions to succeed in the startup world before we you know, go into the vocabulary and expression, I want to ask you all a question. And the question is, which successful startups from LATAM do you start up? The whole idea of startups is becoming big in LATAM. Um, if you think about it, there are around 27 uh, startups in LATAM that are unicorns. Unicorns are startups that are valued at $1 billion and above. Those are unicorns. So think about that, 27 from LATAM, that's a big number. Um, and for example, in 2021, so last year, investors roughly invested around $20 billion in startups in LATAM. So think about that, 
startup is going big in LATAM. Startups are the future and startups is where most of the uh, focus is going to be when it comes to, you know, employment, uh, jobs and other kind of uh, other, other development of the whole region. Right. So this is why we are talking about startups. I hope you are writing your answers in the comments. Um, let's see if we have if, if John can help us get some names from the from the chat. Which startups do you know about? Let's see. Which we already startups? have some comments here. Uh -huh. Ravis, uh -huh. uh, Globant, mm -hmm. right? Uh, New Bank as well. Voila. Ah. Voila, yeah. I've heard. I've heard of that one before. Platzi, of course, <laughs> is there. 100%. Rafi. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm. Mercado Libre. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good. Uber. Good examples. Now, some of these are actually unicorns now, like New Bank is a unicorn, you know, and it started in Latam. That's a big achievement. So this is why we are talking about it. Okay. Now, let's continue. Thank you, John, for helping me out over there in the chats. Uh, now, if we're talking about startups, we need to talk about how can you define a startup? What can you call a startup? Is anything, any new business a startup? How can you define it? Let me know in the comments. Tell me. What is your understanding of the word startup? Okay, think about that. N not every company can be startup. All right, all right, let's see. Uh, let's check the answer. So if you look in the dictionary, if you look in the Cambridge dictionary, the dictionary says a small business that has just been started. Okay, now this is a very simple definition. And let me tell you, people who work in startups will disagree. Not every small business uh, that has just started is a startup, right? So if you ask somebody like Paul, Paul Graham, right? He's the founder of Y Combinator, uh, the, one of the most famous accelerators in LATAM, in, 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 uh, in the startup industry. Paul Graham says, a startup is a company designed to grow fast. If there is constant and fast growth, that company is called a startup. So now the definition is changing, right? Now uh, it's not every company, but something that is growing very fast. For example, uh, Uber, Facebook, Google, they called themselves startups for a very long period of time, 11 years, 15 years, these companies called themselves startups, right? Even though they were not new. So think about that. Um, if there is growth in that company, it's something related with tech, that is a startup, right? So let's take that definition in our mind, moving forward, thinking about startups. Now, now it's the time to practice, right? Now it's the time to test your knowledge. So make sure you're typing while I'm showing you things Make sure you are typing uh, in the comments if you know the answer to the questions. For example, what is an MVP? Do you know the answer? What is an MVP? All right, let's check it out. If you said it's minimum viable product, that's the full, full form of MVP. This means a product that is working, it's a prototype, and your users can interacts and use it right that is mvp why mvp why do you need it well you need it because you want feedback from your users you want to test it you want to see if there are any bugs all these things mvps allow you to do that okay one of the most important and first things that you need in a startup an mvp right i hope you got the answers right let's continue get ready what is the difference between incubators and accelerators? Hey, what is the difference? How can you define an incubator? How can you define an accelerator? This terminology will come all the time when you talk about startups in English. Really important to know the difference. Okay, let's check it out. Let's check it out. So incubators help startups to develop their MVPs. Think about the idea stage. You have your idea, you go to the incubator, 
they help you to develop your idea and make an MVP. Now they have connections with investors, coaching, mentorship, all these things. They help you with networking, putting you in touch with the right people. Okay. And this is where incubators help you. Now, accelerators, they help you to take your startup to the next level. They help you grow. They help you to be bigger in size and they help you with future funding, right? Very important for startups. They need money, right? They also provide places like office areas, even consultancy services, but they, they charge for this. You have to pay either fees or equity. Equity is a part of your business in the early stages, which you can give to accelerators to help you. Okay, so that's the difference, incubators, accelerator. Next, what is value proposition of a startup? Tell me, tell me, what is the value proposition of a startup? All right, let's see, let's see. Make sure you are typing in the comments, value proposition. What do you understand by this? Now, value proposition is a very simple concept. This is the perception of value. What does your user think the value that is created by your product? That is it. If, it's, if, you, if you save time for your users, that's your value proposition. If you save money, that's your value proposition. If it's easy to do something, that's your value proposition. Okay, so that is value proposition. Let's continue. CSAT versus NPS. What are their full forms? Who knows? Who can tell us in the chat? CSAT versus NPS. This comes very often when you talk about startups. Investors ask this to uh, founders. What is the CSAT of your product or your company? What is the NPS of your company? Right? All right. Let's see. So CSAT, customer satisfaction score. This basically is the question. How satisfied are you with our product or service? This score tells us, you know, how happy our customers are. NPS, on the other hand, is net promoter score. This is like, how likely would you recommend us to others, your friends, families, people you know? You know, when you say, oh, I love this company, uh, you should use their service. That's NPS. Um, now, any score above zero is good. NPS above zero is good. Uh, 20 is where people want to be. Uh, above 50 is amazing. Above 80, uh, this is a score out of 100. So above 80 is crazy good. Not many companies have that. I think Apple is around 47 and Samsung is 67. Uh, so those are the kind of companies that have high NPS scores. All right, let's continue. Now, let's talk about metrics. So more vocabulary. When you talk about startups, startups full of metrics, you need to measure things with metrics, test your knowledge. Um, I hope you are busy with your keyboards and uh, typing in the chat. What is the difference between burn rate and runway? Who can tell us? What is the difference between burn rate and runway? Tell me in the comments. All right, let's see. Let's see the answers. How is the chat going, John? How is the interaction in the chat? Are they typing the answers? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ravis. And some of them have gotten the right um, definitions, right, or for, from these acronyms. And some of them are even participating with some extra pieces of information about each of these definitions. So they are committed with the class, let me tell you. Excellent. Happy to hear that. So let's uh, thank you, Johnny, for that. Let's see what is burn rate and what is runway. See if you are right. So burn rate is the amount of money you are spending each month. That is your burn rate. Okay, very simply. And runway, think of it as an uh, aeroplane on a runway in an airport. Uh, the amount of time before you finish your cash, but before you run out of cash, that is runway. In other words, you only have a certain time period before your plane takes off, right? That is your runway. Now, what is your CAC? C-A-C, it's a short form pronunciation, CAC. Very important metric in 
any startup let's see in the chat tell me if you know what is cac all right let's see so cac is customer acquisition cost how much does it cost you expenses to acquire a customer each customer this is all your marketing costs sales people you pay people money in salaries legal fees lawyers all this goes into your cac all right now keep an eye on this this is important i'm going to ask you a question there's going to be a test okay what is your ltv you know when you go and ask for funding your investors will say what is your ltv Tell me what is your LTV? What is LTV in the comments? What is the full form of LTV? All right, lifetime value, money, profit that is created by each customer. This is LTV, but there is a formula. If you notice, LTV needs to be more than CAC. Okay, so for example, tell me in the chat, the test, if your CAC is $100, and if your LTV is $200, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Tell me in the chat, good thing or bad thing? CAC is $100, LTV is $200. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? All right, John, help us out here. Who has the right answer? Oh my goodness. This is, this is gonna be a common finish, not a photo finish, but a common finish. <laughs> <laughs> and we have and we have Jason. Jason Arroyave was the very first one. Lifetime value. Next is Javier Moreno. Oh my goodness, it's great to see Javier uh, again around you know these live classes. Hi Javier. Then we go with Scaviedes. And oh, this is moving really fast. And a lot more people. <laughs> Some people also say Alberto say good. Low Panji says, good thing. Devman says, good. Angela Mateus says, it's good, good thing. Most people say it's a good thing, Ravis. Cool, you thank you. Now. Thank you. Now they are right. Congratulations. And uh, good to uh, see those familiar names. Mm -hmm. if, <laughs> if your CAC is lower than your LTV, that means you are spending less money and your customers are bringing more money in your company. Right, that is the whole idea. Now let's continue. What is your churn rate? You know, this is again a big thing in startups, especially with subscription services. What is your churn rate? Right, like this talk. This is how people in startup feel when we talk about churn rate. Um, let's see. Let's see. So churn rate is the number of customers leaving your company divided by new customers and you multiply that by 100 and that is your churn rate it's basically the difference between people coming in and people going out right uh, and you multiply that by 100 that is your churn rate your idea is to keep the churn rate down as much as possible and we're moving towards the end here now difference between mrr and arr these are short forms these are important metrics again you need to know this if you are going to work in a startup, MRR and ARR. All right, let's see. Give me the full forms, please, in the chat. All right, so let's check together. MRR is monthly recurring revenue. It's basically the money you make every month in a year, in a calendar year from January to December. Um, annual recurring revenue, ARR, is basically the money that you make every year. It's counted yearly, 12-month period. Okay, that is the difference. Now, all this, all this you can find in Curso de Inglés para Startups. This and more. There's so much more to learn uh, about startups and the kind of uh, terminology we use in startups. So my advice to you is this was a a small, small, uh, you know, trailer of that course. If you want to know more, like things like OKRs and thinking, working in teams, all these things from idea to MVP, you know, go to this course and uh, take this course to, to know all of this. 
All right, so this is it for today. I'll be happy to answer some questions. I'm Ravi, and it's lovely to be here. Ravi, I'm taking a look at some comments in the comments section. First of all, people are very excited to learn all this vocabulary, all this terminology, which, like you mentioned, this is essential if you want to succeed in the startup world. And also some of the exercises, people were, you know, playing with the math a little bit. So great, great job. Whenever you have some time, go to the comment section um, and see some love that we can find there for you. We have a question, Ravi, that we want to, to, to ask you right now. And this question is by Alvaro DGO. And he says, do you think that it's a good idea to learn another language using English instead of Spanish only for practice? What do you think? Okay, let me get this right. It's learning another language using English and not Spanish. Mm -hmm. So let's say if I want to, if you want to learn French, you learn French, but using English. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. That's, that's a good question. I've ne nobody has ever asked me that question. The first thing that I can think about uh, when some when thinking about this is that your first language is always going to be like your biggest help in understanding your second languages, plural languages. So if I learn Spanish, I would learn in English. Now, if I learn French, that's also my second language. Uh, I would most likely it would be easier for me to learn it in English. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, if your English level is amazing and you say, oh, let me learn French now in English, even though Spanish is my favorite, uh, Spanish is my first language, you know, uh, that's I th in my understanding, that's going to be challenging. But, you know, if you can do it. Awesome, right? I would say give it a try, right? Let, let's see how, how that goes. Um, yeah, this is a tricky question. I haven't experienced it myself either. Um, well, I have. I'm taking some Portuguese lessons, but the thing with the Portuguese, for instance, is that it's way closer to Spanish than it is to, to English, right? But I guess this also depends on what your first language is and what that third language is uh -huh. because right um if it's for example german i know there are several german uh, like words that are very similar to similar words in english so in that case it might be easier right it, it all mm -hmm. has to do with what their first and third language are true true definitely Definitely. Awesome. Perfect. Well, Ravis, thank you so much for all these exercises, for this wonderful vocabulary that you shared with everyone right now. It's that wonderful time here in our live class to continue mastering our skills, to continue mastering our vocabulary. And I know Waida is ready with the game, but before we get this game started, let's take a look at this video. Let's practice vocabulary about working out. All right. All right. After seeing Andres Blanco running, jogging, right, practicing some vocabulary, it's now time to see what Waida has prepared for us. Why? So tell us everything. I'm ready to play. Amazing. I already see some people in the chat also saying, yes, I'm ready for the game. I'm ready to play. I love it. I'm happy that you are ready at home as well. What about you, Ravi? Are you ready? I am ready, but I am kind of, uh, you know, excited and nervous. Like, what do you have for us today? <laughs> Amazing. I bring back competition today. And... Um, Speaking of competition, why are you thinking about the same thing I'm thinking on Instagram? Oh, 
let's, I, you know, if I were not here, if it was not time for the game, I would be there already. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah. There is an amazing quiz, right? On Instagram about this mm -hmm. class. Yeah. So everyone should, after once, like after we finish this activity, we should go to Instagram or you can take a peek right now because we've prepared a quiz on Instagram. So you can test your knowledge on these topics. So go to Instagram in one of the stories, you can find a very nice quiz. Now, why talking of competition, we have several opportunities to compete. And one of those is your game. That's right. And I'm laughing because I just saw the comment in the chat. Torfe MX says, after the real Platzi Sports Academy. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's I'm not sure that comment would undress. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? Why not? <laughs> Amazing. So let's go with the game. For today's game, we are going to practice vocabulary. And again, we have our the magic of our streamer, Diego. In a minute, you will see, I think it's here on my right. There we go. Oh, a wheel. Bye with different categories, okay? This wheel has categories like food, things that are round, movies, many more categories there. What you Perfect. need to do is after we spin the wheel, I'm going to give you 10 seconds, only 10 seconds to think of one word that corresponds to that category. Now, it's a competition. So how do you win? You get points for every letter in your word. So you need to think of a word that is long. Whoever Perfect. has the longest words will win at the end of the game. Okay? So awesome. Robbie and John, please, on the chat, you need to type your words here. Be ready to type them. And everybody at home, Try to think of the longest word you can think of for that category. And at the end, we will count the points. Any questions, Ravi or John? Perfect. Oh, let's see. Perfect. Yeah, let's, let's do this. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So remember, we'll spin. We'll get one category and you have 10 seconds. I will count them with my fingers here just for a little extra pressure. And after the 10 seconds, you send the word and we see who has the longest word. Something Perfect. important, if it is the name of a movie, for example, well, the name of a movie has more than one word, so it's completely valid, okay? Perfect, let's do it. Perfect, so Diego, please help us with the first one. Let's spin the wheel. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Spin the wheel, spin, spin let's the wheel. Let's see, let's see. Musical oh. instrument, 10 seconds. Oh man, a long word with musical instrument. Six, five. No pressure, right? Four, three, two. <laughs> you need to type it and send it. One, go. Sent. I sent okay. it on the chat, <laughs> in the live chat. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we have, Ravi says, bass guitar. Is, is that the name? Like, it's not different, think a bass and a guitar. I I'm, I'm, don't know about music. Uh, maybe John can tell call us. Them just a bass. Uh, just bass. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course, he's going to say that because <laughs> that means that I cannot count the, 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 the points from guitar. You know, well, I, I have a friend <laughs> who plays the bass, so he, he's never called it bass guitar. It's just a bass. You guys, okay. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Right? And we'll, in the chat, help us solve it, please. If somebody can help us in the chat. We have saxophone in the chat. John, you had electroacoustic guitar. There you go. <laughs> is that different word? from i mean that's not an electric mm -hmm. guitar it's a mix between an electric and an acoustic guitar correct because you can still play play it as, as an acoustic guitar and the sound 
um, comes out from, from an acoustic guitar, but the difference is that you, you plug it in and you can also amplify that sound. It's wonderful. Yes, you're right. I've seen them uh, somewhere. Yeah. Okay, like cool. Acoustic guitars. Mm -hmm. Nice. So please, please type it in the chat here as well. So at the end, we can count how many letters. We have okay. saxophone, we have clarinet, uh, piano, accordion. Very nice. Everybody at home, count the letters. Okay. So far, we have a clear winner. That is John. Let's go with the second category. Let's spin okay. the wheel. And in the meantime... Perfect. I'm writing down my words on a separate document so I can count the letters. Cool. Nice. Teacher in Platzi. Name one Platzi teacher. Okay. If you know name and last name, it counts. 10, 9, 8, 7, 4, 2, 1, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robbie, that was really cool. He's Robbie a teacher. Went with Christian van der Henst. <laughs> John, Cesar Eduardo Cordero Caicedo. Please count the letters. I need to make a letters. Okay. <laughs> I made up the fact that it's Cordero de las Casas. Cesar, I know you're watching right now and I hope you're laughing, but like until that part is true. <laughs> you see how the brain works? My brain just cut that part off. I didn't even see it. <laughs> you see? I'm going to write it down again. <laughs> oh, I saw it now. I saw it now. Okay. Please go ahead and count the letters. Robbie, how many letters in yours? John, okay. how many letters in yours? We have Facundo. We have John Carvajal. Mm. Oh. Christian. Uh, Dani Granata. Tatiana Uribe. Carolina Boquín. Oh, yes. Eh, Maria Angel. Diego de Granda. Cesar Cordero. Nice, nice, so nice. You see, nice. that is his real name, right? <laughs> Cesar Cordero is his real name. We He's... don't know him as the whole... Uh... No, but the, the full name is uh, yeah, yeah, Cesar yeah. Eduardo. <laughs> yes. I should, I should right. use my full name, you know, my I, middle I name. I was going to ask and... <laughs> you, what's your middle name, by the way? I don't use it, but my I'm gonna write it in the chat in live. Uh, this is actually uh, my middle name. There we go. That's my full middle oh. name. Oh, uh, how 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 do you, you pronounce, pronounce it? it? That's <laughs> Yogesh Kumar, which is the name of my dad. We take Yogesh Kumar. our dad's name as the middle name. It's actually Yogesh. It's not Yogesh Kumar. Kumar is like Don in spanish ah. so it's like oh, that kind okay. of connection uh but you know ravi lakani is like the the whole uh yeah. it's like it's like cesar cordero you know yes <laughs> <laughs> okay i said that we would count full names and that was full name okay <laughs> how many Perfect. letters in my case cesar eduardo cordero caicedo that's 21 29 letters 29 And Robbie, for you, Christian uh, van der Hintz? It's 20 letters. 20, 29 and 20. So, John, you're still ahead. Okay. Let's go with the next one. Let's spin okay. the wheel. Okay. Spin the wheel. Spin, spin the wheel. Let's see. Let's see what category. Dun, 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 dun. Pizza toppings. Okay. Mm. Ten. Oh my god. Five. Four. Ah. Two. One. Ten. Let's see. <laughs> okay, Ravi has green peppers. <laughs> <laughs> And John, barbecue oh. terry jacket chicken. Oh go away. <laughs> It does exist. Go I away. swear. <laughs> And he's got time to write the whole thing, you know? That's impressive. Okay. <laughs> We have 
pineapple pepperoni <coughs> ham pineapple cheese mushrooms john you're good at pepperoni. this okay <laughs> very good i think we don't need to count letters i'm sorry but I mean. stop counting yeah. <laughs> let's go with yeah. one more last one okay. let's see if ravi can get john in this one let's see let's spin the wheel spin the wheel of categories spin the wheel what will we get okay. i'm reading the comments <laughs> fruit or vegetable oh. Oh. god mm. um. hey Parmesan cheese, that's a good one. Five, four, three, two, one, go. I went very basic with this one. <laughs> yeah, strawberry, cauliflower. Okay, this one I think, Ravi, can you count the letters? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah sure i don't think it's going to make much difference but i'll count it for you uh <laughs> five <laughs> six I want eleven eleven okay oh. and a strawberry ten, ten. okay ten. one why right. you go in my one. case but what if it's several strawberries <laughs> you, you know <laughs> this is this is uh i would have counted it but you already wrote it in singular so you can't change it now <laughs> okay i'll take it <laughs> amazing okay we have apricot lemon watermelon that's a good Ooh. one lemon dragon fruit look at that mushroom but mushroom is not a mushroom is not a fruit or vegetable peach dragon fruit is the one you mentioned yes yes i read that someone a uh, cucumber as well cucumber nice excellent mm -hmm. okay well nice i think we have a clear winner john congratulations with long words and very good everybody at home it was really nice um well and thank you diego for spinning the wheel for us Awesome, Why? Thank you so much for this game. Thank you, Diego, for making it happen. Ravis, also for participating. It's always great to have you here. Remember, everybody, that in the next couple of sessions, we will continue talking about things that you need to know in English to succeed in the startup world. So go ahead into platzi.com slash agenda and, you know, book yourself for the future events so you don't miss these sessions. Thanks everyone for participating and well, see you again here next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Colombian time, Mexican time. And I promise that next week I'll remember more time zones. See you there.